In this episode, we look at why I built an enclosure for my 3D printer. Since buying my first ever 3D printer just a few weeks ago, I've noticed I've started to develop a cough. I thought nothing of it at first, but when it didn't go away, I started thinking back to when the cough actually started. And that's when I realised it coincided with the purchase of my 3D printer. As the printer is a small and convenient size, I keep it beside me on the desktop while I'm working. I didn't really notice any smell at first, but if I left the room and returned, I could certainly detect an acrid odour. This is my first experience with a 3D printer, so I assume this is normal. Concerned about any potential health effects from the fumes of 3D printing, I jumped online to check it out. I'd heard ABS fumes were harmful, but I thought PLA was pretty safe. PLA is what I print with. Reading through an article on the safety of 3D printing fumes at the website 3dprintingindustry.com, I discovered that PLA is also potentially harmful to your health. Although released in much smaller quantities than ABS, PLA also releases VOCs. VOCs are volatile organic carbons. Quoting the study on the website, it says, Not all VOCs are actually toxic, but some may be, especially for younger users. Another quote from that study, The lab test showed that ABS is significantly more toxic than PLA, but that the corn-based polymer is not exempt from dangerous emissions especially if extruded at temperatures higher than 200 degrees Celsius. Furthermore, as may be expected, the same material spools, when acquired from different resellers, release very different quantities of VOCs, even if used in the same 3D printer and under the same parameters of speed and temperature. The test also demonstrated that the time necessary for the nanoparticle concentration in the air to go back to standard levels was between 10 and 30 minutes after the extrusion process has stopped. So potential toxins can hang around in the air for 10 to 30 minutes after the printing process has stopped. Reading on further through the study, they recommend some steps to help reduce your risk to 3D printing fumes. For example, working in well-ventilated rooms, the ideal solution would be using an air ventilation system capable of moving three times the room's volume of air in one hour. This means that a room measuring 100 cubic metres should have a system capable of displacing 300 cubic metres of air in one hour. The study also states, when using closed chamber 3D printers, it may be possible in the near future to implement an active carbon filtration device, and the team is actively working toward development of a device specifically tailored for 3D printers. So the takeaway from this study is that we should not panic and stop using 3D printers, but we need to be careful about how we use our printers and where we use our printers. In my case, I don't have any air conditioning. Um, the room only has a ceiling fan and some windows for ventilation. Uh, when I open the windows, I do notice that the, the fumes and smell gets blown through the whole house, so I haven't been doing that. Um, but uh, that caused me to start to consider how I could at least try and protect myself from any potential harm that these fumes could be doing, and hence the enclosure for my 3D printer. I was thinking about what material I could use to build my enclosure, when I remembered I had a large sheet of hollow polycarbonate in the garage. The polycarbonate sheet was left over from a patio we had built. Uh, the builders just cut off the top section and used that for a, an arch infill, and there's a large sheet left over, which was about a metre by three metres. Now that I had the building materials sorted, I set about designing the enclosure. I wanted it to be pretty airtight, giving easy access to the printer, and most of all, I wanted the enclosure to be easy to build. I wanted to keep the number of pieces down, and also bend the sheet into corners as one piece where I could, rather than sticking multiple pieces of polycarbonate sheets together. I found a good spot for the printer in front of a window, took measurements, and got to work figuring it all out in Blender. After I'd drawn up what I needed to do, I cut the hollow polycarbonate sheet up into the required pieces, using a circular saw. I clamped the sheets down by using a bed end as a straight edge. Yeah, no, it's not ideal, but it's all I could find at the time. I later realised I could have just scored and snapped the sheet of polycarbonate into pieces. Would have made my life a lot easier if I'd known that at the start of the job. And it would have saved me from trying to clean out the chips 
and shavings left behind from the circular saw in the flutes of the polycarbonate. I still haven't got them all out of the sheet, so if you're going to try and cut these sheets yourself for your own project, I'd recommend using a knife, not a circular saw. I join the pieces together using Gorilla Tape. If you've never seen Gorilla Tape before, let me tell you it's amazing. It's thick, clear, flexible and very strong, and it sticks really well. It's like packaging tape, but a lot thicker and stronger. I initially just taped the sheets at the corners. I was worried about not having enough tape. Then went back and taped all the seams to ensure a good seal. This is a scrap piece of the hollow polycarbonate sheet I used. The sheet was 10mm thick and about 3m by 1m. To bend it, all you need to do is score one side. A few scrapes of the blade until you can feel the blade hitting the individual core flutes, then bend. It leaves a perfect corner. If you need to cut the sheet fully, just slice through the internal corner. For the exhaust fan, I used a 140mm computer case fan I had spare. For the power supply to that fan, I went hunting through a collection of old cables, phone adapters and more bits and pieces that I thought might come in useful one day. I found a few potential candidates, but settled on an old 12 volt Motorola charger. Interestingly, that particular charger tested at 17 volts. I hope it doesn't burn out my fan. I tested the fan and charger together and all seems okay. I joined the cables just by twisting the wires together, don't have any solder, and then used some shrink wrap sleeve to ensure everything was protected and stays together. When moving the printer to the new enclosure, I noticed that the printer had left scorch marks on the top of my desk. Wow, this, this printer gets pretty hot. And it could explain some of the acrid odour I'm smelling. I've put some large stoppers on the bottom of the printer to lift it higher and try and get some airflow under there. And I've cut a slot in the front of the enclosure panel. My plan is that air will be drawn in there, flow across the bottom of the printer, then be expelled higher up in the enclosure through the exhaust fan. After two prints, it seems to be working. So now that I've done a few test prints with the enclosure, am I happy with the result? Yes, definitely. The acrid smell is greatly reduced. I didn't realise it was so bad until today. I had a print going yesterday and the fan was doing a pretty good job. But then the wind picked up, the wind direction changed and we had 80 km an hour gusts blowing directly in at the fan. It was actually spinning the fan backwards and blowing fumes back into the enclosure and out of the bottom of the case. Even though it wouldn't overcome those unusual windy conditions we had yesterday, I ended up installing a second fan to help with the expulsion of the air. But those wind conditions are pretty unusual and I'm not expecting them to cause a problem in the future. If it does turn out that the wind does come from that direction often, I'll look at building some sort of cover for the outside of the fan to protect it from the wind. Another added bonus is the printer is now much quieter. The hollow polycarbonate sheets do a very good job of insulating the sound. A nice side effect I wasn't expecting. So what are the downsides? Well for one, I can see this polycarbonate sheet being a dust magnet, already evidenced by bits of polycarbonate shavings being stuck inside the core flutes. Other than that, I can't see any downfalls. It's quieter, cleaner, and looks pretty good in my opinion. Another bonus will be better bed adhesion on colder days. It was 32 degrees Celsius when printing yesterday and the fans seem to keep everything under control. So what can we take away from this little exercise? Number one is that you need to protect yourself and your family from the possibility of harmful fumes from your 3D printer, whether you're printing ABS, PLA or some other filament. For me personally, all in all, I'd say the 3D printer enclosure was a success and well worth doing. But I think I may end up moving the printer and enclosure further away from me possibly out to the garage. Better safe than sorry. Well that's it for today. I will be releasing my cheery reindeer model tomorrow, so watch out for that video. Thanks very much for watching, my YouTube friends from all over the world, and I'll see you later.